Stephen Mikulak and his wife came to Manitoba, Canada from Poland after the Second World War. Stephen found work as an industrial mechanic in a cement plant, and life was happy and uneventful for nearly 20 years. Perhaps the most convincing evidence for UFOs can be found in Brussels, of all places. For a period of about two years, the whole country was affected by a wave of sightings. They'd been seen by witnesses, the police, and by local radar stations. The Belgian army was forced to take the claim seriously. They allowed their F-16 fighter aircraft to be involved in trying to intercept these UFOs. They had the full backing of the chief of the Belgian air staff, Colonel de Broer. Initially, uh, we thought that some of these observations were caused by uh, atmospheric interference, uh, such as weather conditions or uh, electromagnetic interference. Uh, but later on, we found out that at uh, certain moments, indeed, we could uh, relate one uh, visual observation with one observation on the radar. And of course, then we said, uh, well, to have a confirmation, it uh, may be very useful to have an additional observation from an aircraft. The night of 30 and 34 uh, March, um, we had an observation on the uh, radar, and in addition, a visual observation on the ground confirmed by the police. We decided to send two airplanes in the air uh, around midnight. This video of the F-16's radar track of the object showed the performance of a vehicle of a totally unknown origin. The Air Force were at a complete loss to explain their findings. A press conference was called. What these pilots um, uh, detected was well outside the normal flying envelope of an airplane. Sometimes they had what we call lock-ons, which gave a parameters varying from speeds between 150 knots till uh, 990 knots. Uh, an acceleration which occurred in a few seconds. The Americans denied it was a secret spy plane, so could it have been the first official contact with an alien craft? The speeds would be impossible to, to tolerate uh, for a human being. Uh, that's a, a first point. A second point is uh, the visual observations always describe a a system, a machine, which hangs and hovers above the surface at quite a low altitude without making any noise. Now, uh, with the uh, current technology, that would be impossible. So far, the Belgian authorities have refused to announce any official conclusion to subsequent investigations. The Belgian Air Force decided that whatever the UFO was, it could not be ignored. In 1989-90, uh, we had a lot of uh, observation from the ground, a lot of people seeing uh, strange things in the air, and the Belgian Air Force already scrambled two times at 16 to observe uh, what the people saw from the ground. Wilfried de Brouwer, a colonel at the time, was officer in charge of operations. Some people saw very strange uh, objects in the air uh, with a very peculiar behavior. Uh, they called the police. Uh, the police confirmed the observation. They called the radar station of Blanc. And Blanc uh, confirmed that they saw a blip in the area. And that was also confirmed by another radar station, which is about 100 miles away. Based on that, they asked to send these two aircraft in the air. With two F-16, I was one of one of the two pilots who so was leading the pair for that uh, that mission. Okay, 
had a lot of information coming from the ground, and most people could basically uh, inform us about the exact position of the, I would say, the UFO. Ground radar observed the blip, which was moving very fast from an area south of Brussels towards the east. The aircraft were in the near vicinity and uh, of course tried to detect that particular uh, object. And uh, the two aircraft uh, confirmed that it had a lock on uh, which showed the speed of uh, 700 knots, around 700 knots. The F 16s locked onto the UFO repeatedly, but as they closed in, it changed direction and speed with extraordinary maneuverability. The pilots had no doubt that the target was real. We had a different radar contact on the targets, which happens uh, at least three, four times, where we could acquire a radar lock on with the F 16, and we knew that at least one or two times we had exactly the same contact as the one which was on the screen on the ground. It was accelerating uh, very fast. It was going from uh, 50 knots to more than uh, 1,000 knots. It was really climbing and descending very fast, and it was changing, heading abruptly. And most of the time, it was even flying successfully. The Air Force never did make direct visual contact with the UFO. Exactly what the target was remained a mystery. I don't think it could have been experimental aircraft. Uh, first of all, we always look to the United States. They could have been doing experiments here. I, I don't see why they should be doing it in Belgium in the first place. Secondly, they confirmed officially that it was not them. We had an official declaration of the ambassador here. And uh, thirdly, the performance of this system was such that it could not be related even to an experimental technology. It was not a prototype, and I don't really believe it was a meteorological phenomenon at that, that moment. There was not much left, and one could uh, refer to an uh, extraterrestrial uh, observation or vehicle, if you want. And I think that's an, an option which or an assumption which should not be excluded. I'm not saying that it was an extraterrestrial, but it is an assumption that should not be excluded. The radar tape from one of the F-16s was sent for examination by experts at the Center for the Study of Electronic Warfare. The radar specialist who advised the investigating team there was Professor Emil Schweitzer, a distinguished physicist who teaches at the country's elite military academy. What did he make of the strange, unidentified craft that the Belgian Air Force tried to intercept? That UFO code could make right turns, which is impossible uh, by our laws of uh, mechanics, and that that UFO code uh, also changed very suddenly the velocity, which is also impossible, but it did because it would give uh, an infinite acceleration. Is it possible that the Air Force's unseen UFO was nothing more than a technical aberration in the radar equipment? I don't think that you can explain it by saying that all radars made the same mistake. That's highly unlikely. There are different types of radar, there are different types of antennas, and also the orientation of the target was different for uh, the, the four radars. I'm going to be fired by my colleagues, but I think that extraterrestrial intelligence is very highly likely. <laughs> A photograph of the Belgian Triangle of Lights was later computer-enhanced. The image that was revealed 